Hi guys, good morning. So today we are going to discuss our next topic which includes the two topics. First is the retention and relapse. Second is the soldering. So first we are going to discuss about the retention and relapse. So starting with the definition, what is retention? So it is the holding of the teeth during the post orthodontic phase in an anatomical and in functional and in an aesthetic position. And second is the relapse. It means the tendency of the teeth to return back to their original position. Right? So important are the theorems of the retention. Very important. Commonly asked MCQ. So this is just a mnemonic TAM PBLC TAM. This is according to theorem 1 to theorem number 10. Starting with the first theorem, the T means it tends. It means teeth. So first theorem, it indicates that the teeth that have been moved, they tend to return to their formal or their former position or to their original position. Theorem number 2, it means E. E means elimination. So the elimination of the cause of the malocclusion will prevent the relapse. And M which means the malocclusion. So this in this the malocclusion it should be overcorrected. Fine. Theorem number 4 that is the P. It means the proper occlusion. It is a potent factor in holding the teeth in their corrected position. Theorem number 5 that is the B. B means the bone and the adjacent tissues they must be allowed the time to reorganize around the newly positioned teeth. Theorem number 6 it means L commonly asked MCQ. Theorem number 6 in this if the lower incisors these are placed upright over the basal bone they are more likely to remain in a good alignment theorem number seven that is c it means the corrections these are carried out during the period of growth important because there are less chances to relapse if you correct these malocclusion in the growing period Next is the theorem number 8 that is T. T means farther is the teeth or the farther the teeth move and the lesser is the risk of a relapse. Theorem number 9 is it means A. A means the arch form particularly in the mandibular arch. It cannot be permanently altered by the appliance therapy. Theorem number 10 it means that many treated malocclusion they require the permanent retaining devices for example the midline diastema mcq so after this next are the retainers so what are retainers retainers these are a passive orthodontic appliances that helps in maintaining and stabilizing the position of the teeth long enough to permit the reorganization of the supporting structure when it is after the active phase of orthodontic therapy. Fine. So in this we have two types of retainers. We have the removable retainers. We have the fixed retainers. So the removable retainers are number first is the Hollis retainer. So it was given by Charles Hollis in year 1920 and it is mostly used or most commonly used appliance. Fine. So the classic Hollis retainers in this it consists of a clasp on the molar Y clasp for the retention purpose and in this there is a short labial bow which extending from canine to canine and also in the second Hollis retainer 
there are the clasp adams clasp on the molar for the retention and in this the labial bow it extends from premolar to premolar it helps in closing the space distal to the canine right next is the beck's retainer it was given by p r beck and it consists of a labial wire which extend till the last erupted molar it is this much long fine third one is the clip on retainer or the spring aligner so this is an appliance which is this is an appliance which is made up of a wire framework and which runs these are the labial portion fine and suppose this is the lingual portion of the anterior teeth so starting with the labial portion this appliance it is made up of a wire these are your canines these are your canines fine so there is a wire framework which runs labially and it is passes over the incisor then it is passes over the canine and the premolar and then it is curved back curved back to lie over the lingual surfaces same way like this fine so these are the clip on retainer and these are most commonly used in the correction of a rotation which is commonly seen in the lower anterior region fine next is the kessling tooth positioner and last is the invisible retainers fine so the invisible retainers most commonly used nowadays after the hollis retainer and it is made up of an ultra thin thermoplastic sheet fine it is aesthetically pleasing fine and other advantage of clear appliances it has a minimal work minimal bulk and it is quick to fabricate fine so after the removable retainers coming on to the fixed retainer in this in this first as the banded canine to canine suppose these are your incisors these are your canine fine here pass a wire till here this is banded canine to canine next is the bonded lingual retainer most commonly used in this what you have to do is suppose these are the lingual surfaces or these are the lower incisors you just need to put the stainless steel or the blue algaloy wire which is adapted lingually to follow the anterior curvature fine and then you need to curve these over the canines where it is bonded and third is the band and spur so this is all about the retention and relapse now starting with the next topic that is the soldering so soldering means the joining of the two metals with the help of the third metal that is the by the help of the filler metal but very important point for your mcq that the filler metal it has a lower fusion temperature than that of these two metals which are being joined right so this is what the soldering is now second is the brazing what is brazing see if the fusion temperature of the filler material or the filler metal it exceeds above 450 degree then it is called as brazing next are the dental solder so dental solders these are the alloys that are used as a filler metal to join the two or more metallic parts fine so most dental solder these are composed of the gold silver copper zinc tin and nickel whereas the copper it gives a yellow appearance to the solder and nickel it gives the white color to the solder important for your mcq after this coming on to the flux and anti flux see flux means flow fine the flow of a dental solder 
so the flux it aids in the removal of the oxide coating which leads to the increase the or which leads to increase the flow of the molten solder the flux it also prevents the oxidation of the metal so the flux are the borax glass with the 55% of its composition the boric acid 35% silica 10% very important mcq next are the fluoride flux it contains the boric acid and potassium fluoride in the ratio of 1 is to 1 while the anti flux means anti means prevent it prevent the flow of the dental solder the anti flux are the lead pencil marking the graphite and the iron rod fine right? these are commonly asked mcqs fine right? so guys this is all about the retention and relapse and soldering please go through it once and try to make the notes thank you